Good morning. Today is Sunday, January 1st, 2023. Many of us recently had the opportunity to celebrate Hanukkah with family, friends. I had the great privilege to celebrate with both family and friends several times, and without exception, each celebration was joyous and wonderful. Thank God. What a tremendous uh, privilege. Of course, I assume like many of you, I have had my share of celebrations and holidays and family gatherings that went off the rails when a contrarian relative said something aggressively controversial. And it could be about anything. It could be about politics. It could be about your lifestyle, your ideology, anything. And the atmosphere devolved into bickering and disharmony, hurt feelings, sometimes with long-term and far-reaching consequences. So going forward, since this is something that is part of life and presumably will come up again and again, I have helped to offer seven skills to use to diffuse an argument before it becomes a full-blown fight. And the advice I want to share with you comes from a source that may surprise you, <coughs> excuse me, from the FBI. These skills were pre presented in a recent New York Times article by Jan C. Dunn, and they were developed by Gary Newsner, who was the former chief of the FBI's Crisis Negotiation Unit, and they are used by the FBI to train crisis negotiators. Now, these seven skills or strategies were formulated to help in uh, volatile confrontations like airplane hijackings, kidnappings, hostage standoffs, but they work just as well for more prosaic arguments around the dinner table. And here are the seven skills. Number one, someone starts to say something and get angry and it looks like it's going to cause a problem around the group. Use minimal encouragements. By that I mean, use brief phrases like, yes, and okay, and I see, to convey that you are listening attentively to what the person is saying. So when they're speaking and perhaps their voice is rising and they're getting a little out of control, interrupt, interject with, yes, I see, okay, because it's hard to stay mad at someone when they keep nodding and saying, yes, yes, yes. That's number one. Number two, and this is very, very helpful. Paraphrase. When someone says something aggressive, possibly incendiary, simply restate in your own words what the other person is saying. And this is a very powerful tool because it doesn't just say to another person, which a lot of times we, we might say or we hear someone else saying, I understand. That usually does not help because very often we do not understand, but we're demonstrating. I'm not just saying I understand. I am restating what you said and you have the chance to be able to hear that I do understand 
what you said. And the beauty of this is that you can't fake it, meaning you have to be paying a certain amount of attention to what the other person is saying in order to be able to accurately paraphrase and repeat to them what you heard them say. Number three, try emotional labing, labeling. Now, what that means is try to identify the feeling that the other person is experiencing by starting with a phrase like, you seem as if, or you sound as though. For example, you seem as if you're upset that I asked you, are you still single? Now, the benefit of this is, if you are right, the person will agree. And if you are wrong, they will correct you. Either way, you're suddenly on the same page and you're working toward the same goal of clarifying the person's thoughts. Number four, mirroring. Now, this is the easiest one to use. When someone is upset and they have finished venting what they want to say, simply repeat the last words that they said. So, for example, if, to, if at the end of their harangue they say, and I'm upset. Mirror of this by saying to them, and you are upset. Because when you use the person's actual words, you create an atmosphere of familiarity. You make the person feel more secure, and that can lead to a certain bonding that can help reduce the anxiety, and the anger. Number five, ask open-ended questions. If you ask a question in the middle of an argument that produces a yes or no answer, it doesn't move you any closer to resolution. Are you angry that somebody asked you that question? Yes or no. But an open-ended question invites conversation. And conversation inevitably helps people relax. Think of how much friendlier it is to hear, I didn't understand what you said. Could you please explain it to me more fully? This also has the benefit that it allows the other person to collect their thoughts and to sort out their emotions in order to be able to verbalize to answer your question. Number six, use I messages. And this is a classic and fundamental method of communication. Use statements that begin with I rather than you. If you start a comment with the word you, you can make the person defensive or angry. So instead of saying you need to calm down, which of course never calm down anyone ever, or you need to stop yelling at me, it's much more helpful if you say, I feel frustrated when you're yelling at me because I'm trying to understand what you're saying. So when you do that, you're kind of putting it on your own shoulders. I feel but you're still letting the person know the problems that their behavior is causing. 
And number seven, finally, allow for effective pauses. When people engage in highly charged emotional outbursts, sometimes it can be helpful simply to be silent for a moment or two. Because when someone fails to get a response when they're angry, sometimes they calm down in order to verify that the other person is still listening. And eventually, not always, but often, even the most overwrought person will find it difficult to sustain a one-sided argument and return to a meaningful dialogue. Now, these seven steps from the FBI are not guaranteed. They will not always lead to lowering the contentious temperature of what's going on. But if you are going to be successful in calming things down, it's probably going to be through using one or more of these tactics rather than attacking or belittling or marginalizing or just ignoring the other person. Neusner said, in 30 years of FBI hostage negotiations, there is one aspect of human nature that remains constant. People just want to be acknowledged. Now then, the last thing I found very, very interesting, he adds at the end, <clears throat> the FBI has a protocol, a practice, that when people do send surrender in a life or death situation, like a hijacking, hostage taking, the FBI afterwards will try to find out what they did right. And so they'll say to the person, what did we say that made you come out? What did we say that made you release the hostages? What did we say that helped in this situation? And over the course of 30 years of experience, Neusner says, the answer is always the same. I don't remember what you said, but I liked the way you said it. And that is certainly good advice to keep any situation calm and harmonious. I invite you to try it the next time it's relevant and see if it helps. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and I look forward to seeing you soon in person.